Um, well, just on their own recognizance with a promise to appear at all, at all future hearings. I've seen that. I've, I've seen that. Yeah. They should be able to leave the state, you know, wander free. Anyone can go to. Well, it's over for now. So that was just Roger Root saying he believes Cliven should have been released, but um, <laughs> so we got everyone coming out of coming out of court here. Yeah, what was your reaction to the mistrial? Um, I have real mixed emotions about it. Yeah, um, I think we need to be very specific in our prayers for mistrial with prejudice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's over. Yeah. It's over. So January 8th, we're, we have to January wait to find 8th. out. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you for Thanks, being here. Thanks, <laughs> Wendy, so how, what, did, what was your reaction to the mistrial? Uh, I thought it, I, um, it should have been a dismissal with prejudice. Yeah. And uh, barring that, they should have all been released right now, you know, without the monitors and things on their own recognizance. There's just no excuse for keeping them any longer. Yeah, what was the reaction of the family sitting in there when... When they you know what, everybody did just what she said, you know, we just kind of, I, I was stuck back in a corner, so I don't really know, <laughs> I wasn't with the family, and um, so, but I didn't hear any yells or screams or oohs or odds or anything, so, yeah, but, um, yeah, it should have been a dismissal with the findings, and, yeah. you know, it's just ludicrous that they're dragging this on any longer, so, hopefully, slow wheels of justice, huh? Yeah. All right, thank you for being Thanks, here. Jim. Let's see uh, who else is coming out up here. You know, the media always waits up here and uh, tries to get statements from attorneys and defendants as they come out. I don't see anybody out there right now, so I'm going to come back and wait in the sunshine down here. But again, for those who haven't heard, uh, the mistrial was declared January 8th. We will find out whether or not uh, double jeopardy is attached. And if the mistrial is because of prosecutorial misconduct, then double jeopardy is attached. But we have to wait till December 8th. Uh, I mean, January 8th, I'm sorry. And uh, December 29th, I believe, is when the motions will, are due and the attorneys have to have all those filed and, and turned in. So these people here are very uninformed. Make Monday pay for 24 years of illegal grazing. So you know, one thing people don't don't understand is that the court order um, said that they were to round up the cattle and either give them back to Cliven and put them on his property, or to sell them and give Cliven the money. And uh, there was the, the court order did not include uh, slaughtering and, and burying his cows in mass graves. It, Um, it, uh, it did not. The court order did not include tearing up their their water pipes and their and their infrastructure that they had built for generations. And uh, so basically, you know, we we saw this militarized BLM come after the Bundys over a few thousand dollars of of uh, unpaid fees, basically because they didn't ask permission, they didn't get their permit. And, and uh, they felt like that entitled them to, to surround their home with snipers and surveillance cameras and build up an army to come after them. And uh, I think most Americans were outraged and shocked when we saw what was happening on the news and, and saw pe people being told to go, go stand in a free speech, a First Amendment zone if they wanted to, to exercise their First Amendment to freely speak and protest for redress of grievances against their government. So, uh, anyway, one step at a time. We're halfway there. We've got a mistrial, and, and uh, we do not want to, to uh, another retrial, of course, because we were winning. We were, this, the case was, was going amazingly well, and uh, so we don't want them to change the rules and try to do it again. But, um, so, now that the court is out, it's, it's, uh, the crowd here is, is larger. 
and it looks like some of the shouting has stopped here. Now, Joshua Martinez, someone who knows the law extremely well, is trying to school them over here. Well, that's a big show of support right there. Ladybug Ranch. Thank you, Ladybug Ranch, for your support. See, this is where this is where folks like this are confused. And you know what? He has every right to be here. But what I believe in is that when you uh, you you convert your time of life into labor, you can contract your skill, your labor, your time of life as you see fit. And anything that belongs to you, anything that you build with your two hands, is as a part of you as the fingertips at the end of your hands. Now, if somebody wants to deprive you of that, they have to give you due process of law. There has to be a victim. There has to be damage. Now, instead of the BLM saying, hey, Mr. Bundy owes us this, and going to the county and, and doing it the proper way, they went and used force. They went and used guns. That's what we're protesting. You know, if, they, if they want to stand on principle and say it belongs to the public. Yeah, yeah, that's not due process of law. But these folks want to say that it's public. Well, but Mr. Bundy is part of the public. Now, if if something belongs to the public, that makes us all co-owners. Okay, so the property that you acquired yourself belongs to you. The, the, the property, the public property that you want to use uh, your private property for belongs to all of us. It's public. We're all co-owners. You cannot vote on something to re that requires an individual to do something against their will. That's involuntary servitude. Okay? So what I what, what I try to explain to some of these folks who, who are sometimes lost, who, who sometimes don't get the concept, is that how far are you willing to protect your private property? Now, if your neighbors disagree with what you're doing, do they have a right to go and take a vote to take your property from you or to restrict you from doing something? Is that a free, sovereign republic? No, that is not. That's that's tyranny by the majority. That's that's exactly that's, that's why we're all out here, Josh, because we're trying to be good neighbors. We didn't yeah. like what was happening to our neighbors. I didn't. I didn't uh, like preface this, but there's a bunch of private protesters out here protesting against the bunnies and Josh is out here talking to them, making a little bit too much sense. <laughs> And, and you know, I, I don't want to be argumentative with them. I don't want to argue with them. I want to show them how beautiful our life and our way of life is by living it. I don't have a driver's license. I don't ask permission to do anything. I throw marijuana. I smoke marijuana. And this is my right because I'm the owner of my property. The first form of property is my body. My life comes from my body, which is my property. And anyone that tries to restrict me from doing something to it is out of line, and I have every right to defend myself. Absolutely. That's the principle that this this country was founded on. Absolutely. And, and I don't mind them being out here. As a matter of fact, I'd rather people protest at a wrong time it's than no time at all. It's the only way we can get cameras out yeah. here, Josh, is when these guys yeah. come out. So I'm yeah. kind of like And it. we all know who Clive and Bundy is. He's not an evil man. I've met his family. I'm Hispanic, and you know what? They welcome me like I'm one of theirs. Okay, I've never, I've never heard a word of hate coming from any of them. Carol Bundy, sweet, sweet woman. Cliven, Ammon, Ryan, they're all great people, but it's they're here to demonize those, those good people who have nothing but good intent in their heart. We have Neil Wampler over here. He was acquitted uh, at the trial in Oregon, and he's been out here faithfully supporting. This is awesome. Well, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> none, none for me, thank you. Shauna, what was your reaction to the ruling today? We're live on Facebook. I think it is fabulous because uh, a mistrial with the government at fault becomes uh, invokes the double jeopardy clause. Yeah. Why do you think she wasn't become... able to rule on that today? Why drag it out till January 8th? Because they want to slide it under the, the line. They can't. They don't want to give us the victory that it really should be. They want to try to hold on to their uh, little bit of dignity, I guess. Did she correct the prosecution into all? Did she rebuke them at all during the hearing today? 
for she their didn't conduct. Rebuke them. She really didn't rebuke them. She's trying to hide it. She's trying to make it slide under the rug. Yeah. And that's that's a problem. I now last that, week had they said I thought I thought that today's hearing was supposed to be sealed. Was I wrong or did they change it? No, no, it was never, it was never gonna be sealed. Not, okay. This was not a sealed hearing. Okay. This was nobody knew what she was gonna do today. Right. We knew we had her backed into a corner. That's what we knew. She was in a rock and a hard spot. She couldn't. She would have to make a decision one way or, in, one way or the other. And what she was the reaction to, of the prosecution with, the, with their hand? We've heard in the past, you know, having their their, their 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 face in their hands or their head on the desk. Or was there any mo emotional you know, I response? See them you can see them. There were so many people. Yeah. I, I honestly couldn't see them. But <laughs> but I'm sure that they are. Uh, they got to feel a little ashamed. There's just no way. Yeah. Because they deliberately. And, and, they, and she found that, that yeah. they were deliberately withholding discovery, and that's a crime. How is this trial compared to your own trial that you were acquitted of in Oregon? Well, when you're acquitted, it comes from the jury. This isn't a the jury Yeah, I just mean the process decision. of the day-to-day. So -day. It's, it's, it's a lot the same. Mm -hmm. It's just educating the jury. And now they're in there speaking to the jury again, which really concerns me when they have these big meetings, like they're running the jury over the co almost, and they have no right to question what they think or feel. This jury never even got to make a decision. Yeah, imagine what they were thinking the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah, sitting in, a, sitting in a room and never get to be brought into the courtroom. Yeah, they so were, much. It, I think that's been one of the most sealed. surprising things to me, is, you know, having come to this trial for the first time. Um, is how much is kept out of the eyes of the jury and how everything is sort of previewed, you know, beforehand. And they want to know everything that's going to be said before the jury actually gets to, to see it. When you went through your own trial, what surprised you about the process compared to what you'd seen on television watching? Oh, there's no justice. This, if they, they know everything that happens before it comes in that courtroom in front of the jury. The judge will say, we want no surprises. And they yeah. don't have any surprises because they already know what's going to yeah. happen before they get to the courtroom. Yeah. Now, you, you know, you received an acquittal. So how do you think you were able to get justice within this rigged system? Because Scalia said it best. It's the jury. But people need to educate themselves on the Constitution. If you don't know what you're judging against, you also have a right for jury nullification. They're telling you that jury nullification is illegal. That is yes. not true. Jury nullification is you have the right to judge if that law is legal, I mean, is constitutional or not. Did you read that in the prosecution's motion the other day that it was posted? Um, it, that they In their motion, they said that jury nullification was illegal and wrote a whole page about it being illegal. It's illegal to the federal government because they don't want you to use it. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Make up their own rules. That is not a constitutional law. We need to go back to the Constitution so the people do not get suppressed like this or have their land stolen or the, all of our rights. It isn't just them, but it's all of America. And this will be a win for America. It will be a fabulous thing because we can now show other people that you have the right to not only claim your rights, but to defend your rights. Mm -hmm. And use those rights. And don't let them get brushed away mm -hmm. from a tyrannical government. Yep. That's really sad. Yep. Anyway, and help our neighbors defend their rights, too. Help your neighbors. Stand together. Remember, yes. united we stand, yes. divided we fall. Self-government with union. Absolutely. That's what we were found on. Absolutely. Thank you, Sean. You bet. Okay, let's see. John Lamb is over here. He's over here doing his live update. Let's let's listen in. With prejudice or without prejudice, we are hoping with prejudice. That's what we're praying for yet. And um, I, I believe with all the stuff that came out today and the new stuff that's still got to be coming out, that's what we're going to get. It uh, it's obvious the judge has finally seen this stuff. She has no choice but to declare a mistrial. She uh, had a lot of pressure on her today to just just dismiss it, but she declined to do that at this time, even with all of these Brady violations. Sorry for the poor other, lighting. Uh, misconduct stuff that we have uncovered. So hang in with us. We have a lot more to come with you yet. We got over a hundred people down here today. I, I, I didn't count everybody, but I know both sides of the courtroom was totally packed out today. We had a lot of support in there. And um, I, I know we have a lot of work ahead of us. And we appreciate all the supporters that came down here. 
to um, to be with us today. We've um, we've had some counter protesters down here. I don't know if they're still down here or not. But a little bit ago, they was had a big megaphone and they were yelling, "Keep Bundys off public land." But uh, I don't see them or hear them at this moment. But uh, we're going to turn the camera around here in a minute and just let you see all the supporters that are down here on the street and what we're doing down here. I know the parking in the back was totally packed out. There was no more parking available. It, um, we had to park out on the street and pay parking. Let me see if I can So we're so thankful for here. John Lamb being here every single day to bring us, bring we'll us the up. news from the, from the courtroom when, uh, uh, when we can't be here. And uh, also other people like David who set up these signs every single day comes out every single day faithfully and and brings sets up all of this all the stuff all the flags and everything and uh appreciate him and you can see a lot of a lot of people out here today and uh i believe this is robert i believe his name is and uh you know, obviously it takes a little bit of effort for him to get out here, but he still comes out. Oh, it looks like Kelly is on the news right now, so that's great to see. Let's see if we can hear what she's saying. And uh, what are your thoughts on it being a Well, it should have been a full dismissal with all the Brady violations the prosecutorial misconduct, um, all the corruption within this courtroom, um, for it to be a, a mistrial and for not to declare, you know, uh, with or without prejudice right away. Um, it's a little bit disappointing, but what we've learned in this uh, process is it, uh, justice comes very slow. And so uh, they, they give us things very slowly. So we just have to be patient. We know it's heading in the right direction. Um, we saw this morning in court the prosecution um, uh, being put in time out. <laughs> Every single sentence she said was uh, intentionally withheld evidence, intentionally withheld evidence that would have benefited the defense. Um, there's been uh, over 3,500 pages of d uh, discovery given to them just in the last week alone. Uh, all that is supposed to be given to them 30 days before trial, so it is a Brady violation. Um, and there's still thousands more pages uh, that have been withheld. Um, so what we would really have liked to see is a, a full dismissal with prejudice, but we'll take a mistrial with prejudice if that's what we get, and if we wait two weeks for it, so be it. We'll wait. Uh, last I understood, Clyburn chose to stay. Um, have you been in contact with any of the men who are on trial? Yes, but uh, Clyburn chose to not leave um, with restrictions, so he actually didn't choose to stay, um, but they wouldn't let him out without the restrictions. So he, he wants out. He's not choosing to sit in there, but what he's saying is he won't be monitored um, he's supposed to be innocent uh, and less proven guilty and to leave with an ankle monitor on and people violating his Fourth Amendment rights and coming into his home and, and um, searching things would not mean that he's innocent, less proven guilty. It would actually mean that he's guilty and less proven innocent. I understand this mistrial just came down minutes ago, so have you been in contact with any of their family members to tell us how they're doing? Or? Uh, you know, a lot of us actually anticipated this. Uh, there was lots of discussion amongst all of us last night. We were likely headed to a mistrial, and then we would have to be fighting, filing the motions, proving the misconduct with the Wooten email, and all of the evidence that the... Uh, uh, prosecution has withheld all the exculpatory evidence. It really could have exonerated the defense. Um, so this really isn't that big of a surprise. Many of us predicted it when we walked in today. It will be a mistrial. We will have to fight for the um, for it to be with prejudice. And um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm not actually very. I am. The one thing I'm surprised about is that she uh, did agree so much with the defense on uh, all the Brady violations. Um, you know, she said, I don't even know how many times, 10 or 12 times in court today, uh, that the, the prosecution, the United States prosecution team, which is led by Stephen Myrie, um, failed to uh, disclose information, and not just failed to disclose information, but actually lied on the grand jury indictment. So Dan Love and Wooten and many other people lied on the grand jury indictment saying there were no snipers, uh, that this wasn't a joint effort with other teams, which we found out it was. The domestic terrorist team was in there, the FBI. They were all doing assessments and not turning these over in the end to the defense. Most of all of the, the uh, assessments showed these people not to be a threat. They were only held because of one assessment that said they were a threat to the public. So to have all of this evidence showing they should have been released two years ago and have it not come out, this isn't just about, oh, we've, you know, we've got justice, um, you know, the trial might be done. These men have sat for two years on, on U.S. soil in jail under false pretenses. And there's been no sanctions put on the prosecution. They haven't been disbarred. I mean, it's, um, 
Justice has not been served. This, this is whole what thing, I'll say. This whole thing's still not over yet, but yep. at this moment with this mistrial, how do you feel the, the people who support these men should be feeling right now? Well, we should feel uh, like justice was not served. That's right. if, if somebody is stepping on your face and they finally stop stepping on your face, would you celebrate that justice was served or would you celebrate that you finally had a boot removed from your face? Justice has not been served and we're not done with this. Five and still in jail. Cliven's in jail. The Hammonds are still in jail. We have people all across this country that are political prisoners. So how we feel is that this is um, just one more step in the in the process, fighting for justice. But justice has not been served. Thank you, Kelly. All right. So the defense still has their work cut out for them. They've got nine days to get their motions in. And uh, please go to AmmonBundyDefense.com to help support Morgan Philpot and Rick Kerber as they as they work very hard on those motions. And um, that's the only way that uh, we keep we keep making making progress uh, toward toward putting an end to all of this. I, I counted eight eight, eight, eight Brady violations that she Let me come over here where the sun won't be. Defense team and the prosecutors to go through all this sealed uh, discovery and release it to the public and just redact names to keep people safe. So she's ordering this this discovery to be released to the public. There has been another hearing set for that to declare that if it's all been released or has been, and the Review Journal, Las Vegas Review Journal, is going to be a part of that hearing, and that's set for January 8th also at nine o'clock. So. This, all this discovery is supposed to be released. So to that's us, great. We want everything uh, released. Soon, uh, which was a, a, a we're tired of all the secrets, hiding the government misconduct. The public needs to know the truth. All this information should be made public, and she made that uh, ruling today to make it public. And January 8th, we're going to hear that along with if it's going to be with or without prejudice on this mistrial. Again, thank you. I will turn this camera around one more time. I'll let you see everybody that's down here. And uh, we'll keep you updated. Uh, first thing you hear, anything new coming, uh, we don't have any court tomorrow. We don't have any court at all now until January 8th. So we're done down here. Okay, so people will be back here January 8th for the decision. Um, remember the, the attorneys as they, as they work uh, for the next nine days to get their motions in for, uh, for double jeopardy. And argue against against a retrial. You know, we know that the, it's not uh, beyond the government to do that, as they uh, tried Eric Parker twice and almost a third time. <laughs> but uh, and uh, Rick Kerber now is going for his fourth or fifth retrial, which is absolutely incredible. <laughs> Appreciate people bringing Christmas cookies down for everyone. It was very thoughtful. Hope you all have a Merry Christmas and hope you got your Christmas shopping done. Took a couple days out for Christmas preparations to be down here, but uh, I've got a big fresh ham I'll be cooking on on, on Christmas. Tell you what, I saw I saw this recipe for a fresh ham on the Chew one year, a few years ago, and it was so delicious. I'll never go back to spiraled ham. And uh, so that's what I do. Have my family over on Christmas, and uh, grateful that God came in the flesh and became a man and uh, bore our sins. To give us liberty. That's what is. That's what Christ came to, to set us free to give us liberty, and we won't uh, we won't settle for anything less here in the United States of America. So it's our responsibility to to uh, keep the republic, to defend the, the freedoms that our forefathers fought so hard to give us. All right, I think we're going to shut this off now, and uh, so you guys can go back if you missed anything at the beginning. Had a great uh, interview with Shauna Cox, uh, comments from Kelly Stewart on the news, 
and others, so you can go back and, and uh, check out the beginning if you, if you came in late. Thanks for watching, everyone.